Stop being a noob drifter. Become pro drifter with these simple steps. Number one, if you're starting out and you're really struggling with oversteering, then the solution is very simple. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. For example, you can reduce the front tire width slightly or increase the rear tire width slightly instead. And the same honestly goes with tire pressure. If you have less tire pressure in the front, that's more grip. Less tire pressure basically means that there will be more contact between the tire and the road. Now, another way is to increase the camber in front, but having the rear tires almost straight. So just test around. You could even combine these two if you're still oversteering. But I do know oversteering is the biggest issue when you're starting out. Number two, pick an unrealistic drift car. Let me explain before you cancel me. Now, there are some people out there. They buy a brand new wheel and their expectation is to drift like Sea Trader from day one. And after three hours, they cannot even connect the corner. They give up and they never touch the wheel ever again. So if your goal is only to drift without much practice and no care for realism, then there are special car packs out there for you. Now those easy car packs in a set of Corsa, for example, are Tando Bodies and Gravy Garage, which are fun car packs. They're just not as realistic as some other ones, okay? But now if you do have some time on your hands and you're not afraid to fail, then ignore those car packs because they are so far from realistic. The most simple way to test if a car pack is realistic or not is to let go of the throttle mid drift and see how fast it grips back if it feels slow and sluggish then it's not realistic in real life if you drift there's a lot of grip between the tire and the road and if you let go of the wheel the car straightens out pretty fast. That's a good little test right there. Number three. The better the gear, the easier it is. Let me explain. So if your sim setup does have force feedback, but it only came with two pedals, then it's already harder for you. Clutch kicking is a very easy way to correct drifts and initiate them as well. So if you're using like cheap gear, right? And you're struggling at drifting, that's why. Now, I'm not saying that you need like a direct drive full force feedback 3000 4K 1080p 60fps RGB AI wheel. No, what you need is simple. 900 degrees of wheel rotation with force feedback. Eight shifter and three pedals. That's all. That's all you need. Three requirements. Maybe you can even leave the shifter out. But honestly, I feel like these are the three minimum requirements. Now, I've also talked to some players in our Discord who have switched from monitor drifting to VR drifting. And they did say it made the drifting much easier for them. Number four, the motivation. When you start your drift practice journey, you tend to compare yourself with everybody else you see and those epic drift videos in YouTube, right? See Toyota looking at you. And then there is you struggling to complete a single corner and you get demotivated. You need to embrace the failure. All of those pro drifters went through the same exact thing as you are going through right now. You need to fail. You are a noob. Embrace it because you cannot get worse only better. What really helps over here from early on is record your drift session. Just save them somewhere. Put them in a folder. After a week, go back and your mind is gonna be blown. If you drift every day, you won't notice any big changes on a daily basis. After a week of practicing, if you go back and you see your very first drift session, you're gonna see it's like day and night. Trust me. Now, I also asked around in my Discord, how long did it take people to learn how to properly drift? And believe it or not, the average is a full year and they also said something interesting. They watch a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to drift. So I guess the information is out there. You just cannot let yourself get demotivated. But you need dedication to make a change. Number five, start with easier games. Now, again, this all comes down to how much time you have on your hands, right? If your only goal is to get sideways and drift, you can simply switch the game. A set of Corsa just might be scary at first with all the mods and stuff, right? You can like dial it down a notch, drifting more arcade -ish games like Forge Horizon 5, Car X Drift Racing Online. In Forza, by the way, I do recommend using old muscle cars. Just mark my words, they are smooth and they don't oversteer as easily as the other cars. As for Car X, over the years, they have reworked the wheel physics. And honestly, on a wheel, Car X feels pretty good now. Now, as for steering wheel settings or car settings, listen, you can try out different tunes. I honestly find that default car tunes are completely fine in the beginning. And even 
with default steering wheel tunes like most people when they get into sim drifting they need to get the perfect settings for everything right it's not gonna help you what's gonna help you is you pure practice like it's fine to slightly mess around with tire pressure a little bit of camber tire width but that should be all that should be enough i know you guys don't want to hear it but the truth is if you get c torito steering wheel settings you are not gonna drift like c torito so just practice get on the wheel get out there go number six starting with 900 degrees rotation from day one is like getting splashed with ice cold water while you're asleep now some will say that it will be more difficult to relearn later on how to drift with 900 degrees and i agree now for me personally lowering the wheel rotation gave me a lot of motivation to keep on going because at least i could hold the drift now if you're already like somewhat okay drifter then absolutely don't lower the wheel rotation but in the very beginning don't be afraid to start with like 540 degrees it's gonna be way easier for you and you can always bump it up later but you need to understand how transitions work at first that is the only reason it's gonna be really hard with 900 and also uh, in the very beginning like don't go into online lobbies you need a lot of space no people around don't pick like a narrow target track the more open space you have the better number seven stop max revving your car if you initiate the drift it is fine to go max throttle for a second or two but if you keep the throttle down afterwards then you're gonna make the tail slip up too much you don't want that like during a drift you should probably only use like half of the throttle and then just adjust depending on if you need like less angle or more angle in that specific corner right the thing is i find that most beginners from day one they only focus on the steering wheel like this is their their only focus it's it's on the hands they don't really think about the pedals it's like either full throttle or nothing right and i think this is like the biggest problem if you're like starting out to be honest like you should remind yourself to shift the focus from the wheel to the pedals a very good tip over here as well now listen use your headphones to hear your car revs and don't blast any music at the same time hearing your revs is very important now one thing weirdly enough that did help me in the very beginning was more horsepower like i find that if the car lacks torque it is harder to drift with it in the beginning at least because like the reaction times are slower right if car has less horsepower you put the throttle down it takes like a couple of seconds to get the revs up it's just so slow and you don't really know how to predict the car's handling in advance as well right so higher torque and horsepower will help you correct your drifting faster but then again it's like a double-edged sword right because if you just max rev it most of the time then you're doomed you're gonna you're gonna oversteer you're gonna spin out so you do gotta learn how to fit the throttle number eight you learn the basics now what record yourself drifting i don't mean in the game i mean like your wheel cam like how relaxed are your hands on the wheel like if you're tense with the wheel and your hands are like constantly moving around then that's a bad sign your hands should be here most of the time in the middle right over here not like all the way like this no so when you go on your practice run pay attention to your hands and give yourself a challenge the challenge is simple drift around the drift track while moving your hands as less as possible you can still let go of the wheel and let the force feedback do all the magic for you which is the goal by the way but try to hold your hands in this position over here like right over here like you're doing a driving exam okay just over here now another step forward would be to use left foot braking so while drifting use your left foot braking to slow your car down without actually stopping your drift and this will become more important when you do tandems later on but if you do brake too much with too much force your rpms drop down and your drift is over so it it's kind of tricky the best bet would be to like find a tandem buddy maybe you have like a friend who is into sim racing as well you guys could practice together that'd be the perfect scenario right now if you don't we do have an Assetto Corsa chill drift server in our discord as well anyone is welcome to join and practice over there you don't have to be good also fun fact it is scientifically proven that if you do subscribe you will instantly become a pro drifter so yeah anyway uh don't give up boys and as always stay sideways <laughs>